Good morning. Thank you for watching. Another beautiful Lord's Day. Uh, hopefully y'all are inside and warm. It's uh, weather been pretty rough this week and the roads around here is pretty rough. And uh, I, I'm assuming that a lot of folks, a lot of churches is probably closed this morning. If you uh, hadn't got a place to go, maybe you can pass this around. And uh, this little lesson I've got, maybe you can pass it around to, to folks that's not going to church. But uh, this morning we'll get all on our sick list. We got Paul Lahue, Ashlyn Hare, John Hare, Wade Candycorn, Melissa Bogle, Irene Bartlett, Doyle Duke, Naomi Blair, Lee Heath, Clint Blanton, Awana Peeler, Terry Parham, uh, Benny Blair, Taylor Blanton, Sharon Armstrong, Randy Simmons. Uh, Becky and Lonnie Barks and Thomas Bogle. Uh, please keep all of these folks in your prayers. Um, we'll get on our lesson here this morning. It's uh, uh, I'm going to title it Sifted by Satan. Uh, and it's an article that I found. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get some uh, good out of it. it. And it was Jesus talking to uh, his apostles when he was... Uh, uh, going to uh, uh, fixing to be uh, denied by Peter uh, and he's talking to Peter and it's uh, it's like I said it's called sifted by Satan uh, and this is coming out of Luke uh, chapter 22 uh, and Jesus uh, says something shocking in uh, verse 31 he says Simon Simon uh, behold Satan has demanded to have you all that he might sift you as wheat. The you in both places is plural. So Jesus addresses Peter who represents the 12 apostles. All of the apostles are under his, this threat. Satan is demanding to have all of you. This causes me to shudder. And I think uh, it should cause all of us to shudder. Satan is asking for you. Satan is demanding to have you. Uh, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, a grain that would be put into a sieve uh, and where uh, the head of the grain was taken apart. To be sifted like wheat is like a metaphor for being taken apart. Satan is trying to ruin uh, Peter and the apostles and leave them in pieces. Uh, does this not remind you of exactly what we read in the first two chapters of the book of Job? Satan does the same thing to Job. Satan approaches the Lord in heaven and asks uh, to essentially try to ruin Job and leave him in pieces. Um, you know, and this this applies to all of us today too. Uh, the world is uh, trying to tear us apart. Satan's in the world. He's trying to tear us apart. And he's working pretty good right now in our country. Um, we see something really important about Satan, who is what? Uh, and is what he is doing. Satan is not merely an accuser. He is not only standing there uh, to condemn us when we sin, but he causes uh, reason for accusation. Satan is an accuser, an attacker of our faith. Satan wants to take our faith um, apart. Do we think uh, of Satan's work in these terms? Do we see the spiritual battle revealed to the eyes of the apostles and to ourselves? You know, that's something I, I thought about when I was reading this. You know, if you see somebody coming at you with a gun or a knife, uh, you realize that you're in danger. Uh, but, you know, Satan is kind of an unseen evil. Uh, he is after you. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, Peter tells us that uh, Satan is after us like a, a roaring lion. Um, and we don't see that, but in the, in the spiritual world, we don't see uh, Satan doing that. But, you know, we can see the results, and the results are when we sin. Um, Simon Peter is particularly under this threat of having his faith shredded. Please notice that Jesus does not call him by his name, which, uh, which was Peter, meaning the rock. Uh, Peter, uh, rather, Jesus goes back to his birth name, which was Simon. You are not going to be a rock at this moment. 
Uh, Simon, Satan is attacking your faith and demanding to take you apart. We need to recognize the power of Satan. Satan is real and the power is great. Do you feel that Satan is trying to take your faith and leave it in pieces? Do you recognize that Satan wants to sift you and ruin you? Are you under attack? If you are uh, trying to profess the faith in Jesus and give your life uh, in a passionate pursuit of him, the Apostle Paul says that the evil one is shooting flaming arrows at you. Uh, but Jesus is our intercessor. Uh, but listen to what Jesus said. He said, uh, Jesus says that he has prayed for Peter. Please note that in verse 32, in all four instances of the word you and you, you, your are singular. So Jesus is directing this particularly to Peter. Listen to the wonderful words of, the, of hope. Satan is trying to leave you in pieces. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not be lost. Notice that Jesus uh, does not pray that Peter would not sin in that moment. Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him three times. But the issue at hand is not simply the sin, but what happens next. What will Peter do after he fails the Lord? Peter will sin. But this is not a surprise. Everyone will sin. Everyone will fall short. Everyone uh, lets the Lord down. The question is not if you're going to sin. The question is, what are you going to do after that? Is Satan going to be successful and to shred your faith to pieces? Our effort is not only to avoid sin, but also to not allow our faith to be shattered when we fall short. What will we do once we sin? It is so easy to be demoralized by our failures. It is easy to quit, uh, to want to quit because of our shortcomings. Uh, perhaps the easiest thing to do is to give up. And how many people do we know that used to come to church and they no longer do that? Uh, you know, it's easy to give up and folks uh, do that a lot. It says, what do I mean? Uh, what I mean by this is we still come to church and do some external things, but we let our heart grow cold. We no longer passionately pursue Jesus because we are just not good enough. But we must remember something. We can never be good enough. And Jesus came because we are not good. Uh, but what will we do after we sin? What will become of our faith after we have fallen short? Jesus says that he has prayed on the behalf of Peter. Jesus is making intercession. What does that mean for Peter? Listen to the verse 32. Peter can turn again and strengthen his brothers. The word turn that Jesus uses is the same word found in Acts 3 verse 19. When Peter preached to Jerusalem, repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. The word turn is in speaking of repentance. James used the word to speak of one who wanders from the truth, but is brought back. My brothers, if anyone among you that wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. It is not going to be over for Peter. Jesus had made intercession so Peter could turn again and strengthen the brothers. I believe this is part of Job's story also. We're, read, we're reading Job and watching what he will do. Satan says that, that all this suffering will tear Job's face to shreds. Does the story tell of Job's per perfection? Absolutely not. Job says things that are all ought not have been said even by his own admission but what happens at the conclusion when God addresses the foolishness and sinfulness of Job listen to Job's words therefore I despise myself and I and repent in dust and ashes that's in Job 42 verse 6 what about us I want us to see what Jesus does for Peter is what he does for us Furthermore, former priests were in many number because they were prevented by 
uh, death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercessions for them. That's in Hebrews 7, uh, 23. Uh, who is to condemn? Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who was the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That is what it means that Jesus makes intercession for us. Our failure does not have to be the end of our faith. Jesus is interceding. Jesus is doing something because of our failure. We can come back to God. Jesus has a acted so that we can turn again. Sin does not have to be the falling from faith. So if we do mess up, which we are going to, we have Jesus to intercede for us. He's going to pray for us that we'll be strong and not lose our faith, just like he did for Peter. You know, when we got Jesus on our side, who can be against us? So we need to continue uh, down our road uh, being a Christian. If you're not a Christian, I hope that you uh, would change your mind on that. Uh, yeah, life is short. Life is fragile. You never know uh, when you're going to uh, pass away from this earth. Uh, people do it uh, all the time, and it's really unexpected sometimes. Uh, but you need to be ready. And the only way to be ready is to be a Christian. Uh, you have to uh, uh, repent, confess, and be baptized uh, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So keep that thing, keep that in your mind, and, and keep the faith. Remember, if you sin, we have Jesus on our side. We can ask His forgiveness. We can repent, and don't give in to Satan. A lot of people are doing that these days. We have a country that's really going bad right now, and we've got to get it turned around. If we don't, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. We, we need to stick together. Christians need to start standing up for themselves, and we need to keep marching on. And, uh, so thank you for watching this morning. Uh, this is uh, 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 another lesson here, and maybe you get some good out of it. Uh, Please remember our first responders and our doctors and nurses and uh, those that keep us safe and healthy. And please remember our, our uh, servicemen and women and keep them in your prayers. They're, they're in a bad spot these days with the war and everything over in, in the Middle East. And uh, please keep all those folks in your prayers and hope they'll be safe and get to come home to their families and friends. Once again, thank you for watching. God bless. See you next time.